Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Mackey, and I'm an optometrist at the Eye Center in Bradenton, Florida. I'd like to welcome you to a special program highlighting an organization that is very important to me and my guests here today, the Eye Center Vision Foundation. I'm joined here by my partners at the Eye Center, Drs. Michael Mackey, Paige Gillenwaters, and Brad Laudacina. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm glad to be here. Dr. Mackey, I'd like to jump right in and ask you Tell us about the Eye Center Vision Foundation. Well, the Eye Center Vision Foundation is a 501c3 charitable organization. Its ultimate goal is to provide eye care and eyeglasses for needy Manatee County school children. Its beginnings are a little more humble. It probably goes back over 30 years when the founding partners of the Eye Center before us really believed in giving back to the community. And in so, they had a very loose partnership with the Manatee County school system, and they donated roughly 50 eye exams and glasses to the school system each year. The school system kind of did what they felt, you know, need with them, but it was a very loose organization. So in essence, what the foundation has done is allow us to take something that's really been in place and really doing a good service and make it better. Great. And Dr. Gillenwaters, what are your goals or missions with the Vision Foundation? Our goal with the Vision Foundation is to be able to identify students in Manatee County who are struggling with their vision, uh, may not be able to afford care, uh, and just be able to help them uh, to the best of our ability. Um, usually, it's as simple as prescribing eyeglasses and, and doing a full exam. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more complicated. Sometimes it requires a referral to an ophthalmologist and co-management from there. Uh, we're just saddened by the thought that there are students in Manatee County who are doing poorly in school because of their vision, and we believe that the Vision Foundation will help to solve that. I think it will, too. I think it's great. And Dr. Ladisina, what types of problems do you see in these patients that come in? Sure. You know, most commonly um, we see normal vision-related problems, nearsightedness, farsightedness, or astigmatism. Um, but in doing a thorough eye exam, we're able to rule out, you know, anything. And sometimes you'll see things like eye turns or suppression in the eyes, which can, you know, some people call a lazy eye. Um, but, but more often than not, it's, it's just typically refractive-related issues that can be fixed with glasses. Yeah, something that's easily fixed, but unfortunately these kids don't have the means necessary to do it. So Absolutely. It's great. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys, all of you, have seen some really interesting cases. Some of them are cut and dry, but I'm sure there are some interesting cases you've seen. Dr. Gillenwater, is there, is there anything that comes to mind for you? I do have a most memorable case. Um, it was a little girl was a patient of mine. Uh, she came in with her grandmother. She was so cute. She was about seven years old, um, and she was really struggling with her vision and struggling with her brand new glasses she had got somewhere else. Uh, she wasn't wearing them, and she was frustrated, and of course her grandmother was concerned. Um, so with a thorough eye exam, we discovered she had a cataract in one of her eyes. She was born that way. So at that point, you know, the best pair of glasses in the world would not have helped her. So it wasn't as easy and cut and dry as prescribing a pair of glasses, but we were able to arrange for her to see a pediatric specialist in St. Pete, who is now seeing her a few times a year. Um, he'll be able to determine when or if she'll need cataract surgery. Uh, and she and her family have a better understanding of her eyes and her vision, and she'll be in the best hands for, for any future needs. Now, when you first found this cataract, I'm sure the family was a little bit nervous because the cost of this extra care. And with the Vision Foundation, it was nice, it's nice to know that these parents don't have to be nervous about that. We've got the funds to cover that. I'm not sure how much they had to use from it or if they ended up getting medical care, but they didn't have to worry about it. Dr. Gillen Waters was able to take care of, of this, this girl, and now she's continuing and supposedly getting better, right? Yes. All Children's Hospital really helped too. You know, they, they helped in just kind of sending us the bill when that visit was over and we just kind of co-managed together for that patient. So she didn't, 
she wasn't out anything. She didn't have to pay for anything. That's great. That's great. Along those lines, too, I've found any patient I've had to, needed to be referred for more tertiary care, the places we send them to have been very supportive. Oh, you mean y'all are paying through this for the foundation? Well, by all means, we can do, and whatever we can do to help, you know, to keep the cost down, we'll do it. So just, there's people out there that are willing to help when you just get the word or get the ball rolling, if you would. I do have to say, we have had a huge outpouring of community, community support with this. It's, it's amazing. You know, anybody knows if you're doing something nice, for other people, a lot of people want to get in on it. So it's it's been a very, it's really helped us feel better about what we're doing, knowing that the community is really just supporting us. It really is nice. On those lines, Dr. Mackey, uh, what, what made you come up with your own foundation? Like you said, you already had this service in place. What made you go or made you think that it would be a good idea to go to the next level with this foundation? Well, this is one of my favorite stories because really it was not on the radar for a long time. We've been doing this, as I said before, we gave vouchers to the school system and the children would show up and we had great stories then too, you know, the, the children would get glasses and they would see great, but that was really where it kind of ended. And I want to say it was maybe 2012, the, the lead nurse um, in the school system and a few of them got together in essence they did a scrapbook and I actually brought it today, it's one of my pride and joys. And they came in and they asked my front desk and they, they said, Dr. Mackey, there's a couple school nurses here to see you and for the life of me I couldn't think about maybe why they were there. So we'll let, put them in my office, and I went and met them, and they gave me this. In essence, it's a scrapbook. And they had the nurses basically spearhead it, but they had all the children we've been given glasses to. They did thank you notes, and they drew pictures, and they did all these things that really made me realize that, you know, we get into the monotony and we just do this and we give back to the community, but we really sometimes stop and don't think what we're really doing for these people on an individual basis. And this really made me stop and think about it. And I thought, you know, if this is such a good thing on such a small level, why can't it be bigger? You know, why can't it be better? The best thing is when you have a good idea. That's the hard part. Making something better generally isn't. So at that point, we thought about it. And as, you know, everyone at this table here remembers, you know, there's a lot of thought about it. But then I decided to meet with the Manatee County school nurses. The school nurses I can't say enough about as far as what they do and what they do in the trenches for our school kids. They're more than just the girl there putting band-aids on. You know, at the time's right, they do so much for these children. They're aware of these children's problems, everything from developmental to even familial to some degree. Um, so we met with them and we said, you know, if we're willing to do this, is there a need for it? And if there is a need for it, here's the caveat. Will you help us? And again, the support was, was wonderful. They, A, felt the need was great. They felt the amount of vouchers we were doing wasn't enough, and more could be better. And with them, they offered the help. And the help that they gave us is really to police this. We didn't start this foundation to, to have administrative costs, to have things that we need to do to, you know, to reach the community, and that's where they come in. They're doing school screenings every year. And in these school screenings, they identify the kids that are bad, and then they do the policing to get them into us. So it was really a great partnership with them. So it was, it was really a, taking an idea that had been there, making, making us feel good about what we're doing it, and taking it to the next level to make us start the foundation. Yeah, and the nurses have been very, very supportive of us. Every time we, we talk about the Vision Foundation, they, they're, they're excited about these vouchers that we have because there's no strings attached. You know, that you, with insurances, you can get one eye exam a year and one pair of glasses a year that will be covered by your insurance if you're so lucky. Well, these are kids, boys running around the playground, girls doing gymnastics. Their glasses fall off, their glasses break, and they have to wait a year or six months, however long it is, until their insurance covers it again. And that's where these vouchers are fabulous. We don't care. We don't care if you just got new glasses three months ago. We just want you to be able to see so the school nurse can give you the voucher and the, the child can come in and get, get the, the glasses. Whether or not they need an eye exam, they get the glasses. And it's, it's, it's really neat. I even had a, a young man about a month ago came in and he was a little bit down because he didn't have any glasses. So of course he was having a hard time in high school. But he was really down because he loved soccer. He wanted to play soccer. And without glasses or even sports goggles, the team really wouldn't let him play because he couldn't see what he was doing. 
So because of the foundation and because of the extra money that we have, we can do this. I was able to get him a pair of glasses to wear at school and then also a pair of sports glasses that he could wear playing soccer. So when he came in and got his glasses, he wasn't super excited about the glasses he had to wear at school, but he was very excited about being able to play soccer. There's so not too many really teenage cool. kids that are all that excited about getting glasses. No. <laughs> but it's a necessary evil for them. Right. Um, and Dr. Lausina, we talked about how the school nurses do the screenings, but what if, you know, your child, you're just noticing that your child is not seeing well, they're not doing well in school, let's say the grades are going down, what must these kids do in order to, to get hooked up with the Vision Foundation? Well, as you guys have said, the school nurses are pivotal, pivotal in the success of this program. Um, if a parent notices a problem or a teacher notices a problem, then they're referred to the school nurse, at which time they're going to have a screening done. And it's just a basic screening to measure their vision and assess if there's any gross problems. And if there's any irregularities or they fail the screening, then they're given they're, the school nurses will look for any available options. Sometimes there's voucher programs or government assistance programs, and sometimes these kids don't, they don't qualify for those and that's when they get the voucher for the Vision Foundation and they bring that voucher to us and we do the full comprehensive eye exam and it's a system of checks and balances that relies very much on our school nurses which have just done the most outstanding job possible. Yeah, I, I found the nurses, even the, the, the teachers at school can help too. But you know, like Dr. Latacina said, if you're a parent and you, you see that your kid is struggling, you just ask the school nurse. She, the, the nurses do everything for us. Um, and Dr. Gilmaters, I know the schools do the vision screenings. I know I've done a couple at some of the schools. They'll do first grade, kindergarten, third grade. Not all the grades are done. Mm -hmm. But um, if, if a child passes the vision screening, do you think they still need an eye exam? That's a good question. Um, I do. I think everyone here, we love vision screenings. Um, we love the fact that schools are doing vision screenings. It's, it's great. Uh, but a vision screening will not replace a full eye exam. So if you notice a child or a student is having trouble with their vision, they're squinting or straining, uh, complaining about headaches even, those would all be really great reasons to come in for a full eye exam. Some things vision screenings just aren't able to detect. Just because you can read a certain line on the chart, it doesn't mean that the eyes are healthy, or it doesn't mean that you can read that line on the chart easily or comfortably. So, so yes, so even if you pass a vision screening, if you're having any kind of symptoms, I would definitely say come in for a full eye exam. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, that's a good idea too to any parent. And how often, Dr. Latacina, should a child have their vision checked? We recommend every year. You know, kids, especially this age, they're growing, their bodies are growing, they're getting taller. When they're getting bigger, their eyes are growing too. And, and as their eyes grow, their refractive status is going to change. So just because they got <coughs> glasses this year, you know, a year later, there could be enough change that would indicate a need to update the glasses to more current prescription because the whole goal here is, is kids seeing well. And if a kid is growing up and his prescription's changing and you don't keep him seeing well, then, then we're missing the point a little bit. So we, we recommend a year for every child. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of growth going on. Teenagers, mm. especially teenagers, they, they change a lot. Um, and Dr. Mackey, how important is visual acuity? I mean, obviously we all want to see well, but how important is it and why is it more important in kids? Well, that's a loaded question to the four people at this table. We're all <laughs> optometrists. We think it's the most important thing that goes to school. But with that being said, if you can't see, you can't study, you can't succeed. The biggest issue I have found, and this just goes for you know all my patients across the board with children, I've had many parents, and I'm sure you all have too, come in and they're distraught when their kid can't read that chart very well. I had no idea. I had no idea my, my my little Johnny can't see. And, and they're, they're generally upset because you know, they feel it's bad parenting. Well, don't feel that way. Our society now, good, bad, or indifferent, is very technological. Everything we're doing is up close, whether it be phones, tablets, even in schools, you know, laptops, and everything they're doing is here. So a nearsighted child, which for the record are the people that tend to see good up close but not well far away, they can be perfect in a home environment because they're never looking at anything. And even most homes, the TV's still only 10 feet away. And huge. And big. <laughs> so you can have relatively poor vision and you would never notice as a parent. So, you know, that piggybacks what Dr. Latticine and Gillenwater said that, you know, get their eyes checked because, you know, they, you may not know what's going on, but 
the teachers, they're going to catch this because that could be the only place that these kids are actually doing something further than they can touch. Looking at the overheads and my data chalkboards, but now the overhead projectors, <laughs> the teachers can pick this up. And again, now rolling into our foundation and what the nurses and the teachers can do for these kids, it's a great starting point. Parents don't always see it. Right. It's true. And Dr. Lattice, now we, we touched on some of the cases that we see, that we've seen with the Vision Foundation. Um, but are there any other things that parents should be worried about with their kids? Any other silent things or things you can't tell? Absolutely. You know, while it would be a minority of the cases, there's lots of prevalent conditions that could affect the child. Um, things like glaucoma or congenital retinal problems, or in the case of Dr. Gillenwater's patient, a congenital cataract. These are things that are you know, not something so easily corrected with a pair of glasses, but something that is, requires management. Some of them require treatment. Some of them require surgery. Um, you know, every condition is a little bit different, but you know, young or old or different, the eyes, they can be affected at any age by these conditions. Yeah, yeah that's true. And I know we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but Dr. Gillenwaters, I don't know if you wanted to add something mm -hmm. about, um, you know, how would a parent know? Like, what would you, what would you say, how would a parent know if their child needs, needs help? Yeah, it can be tough because a child won't always come out and say they're having trouble with their vision. You know, they don't know what it's like to see clearly versus, you know, blurred. They don't know what they're supposed to be seeing. And even when they can pick up on it, it's difficult for them to communicate that or to verbalize it. So I think parents should just watch and observe, watch for squinting, watch for eye rubbing, like when a child's doing their homework. Um, if a child is avoiding homework or avoiding reading or getting frustrated easily, sometimes that can be an indication of requiring glasses. So, so just observe and watch. Frequent headaches would be a great reason. Any of these, a great reason to come in for a full eye exam and, and, and may be requiring glasses. And, and just, on a, just an, on a side note, Listen to your kids. I have I had a kindergartner last year, my daughter, who said she was having a little bit of trouble seeing. I didn't believe her. I'm an optometrist. <laughs> Listen to your kids. Some of them are faking, some of them just want glasses, but most of the time they really do need them. So yeah, definitely just listen to them. Uh, Dr. Mackey, what are some of the obstacles you find for getting these kids care or some of the nurses are finding? Have they expressed anything to you? I would say in one word, apathy. You know, there's apathy on so many levels. You know, as, as society grows and, you know, everything from class size to really parenting at home, you know. One of the biggest problems we're having right now, and it's, it's sad to say, but the nurses work so hard, they identify these children, they get these children these vouchers, and then unfortunately they never show up. And that's something we need to work on. That's something that we need to work on, you know, as a as a group of, of community servants, that's what we need to work on, you know, from everything from our school system and just societally. I'd say that's the biggest obstacle, just getting the people in touch with these systems that are for them. And I, that's what I found to be the biggest problem. Yeah. And then some of the nurses have also mentioned that the parents have a hard time getting their kids to the eye doctor to make the appointment. So that's the other thing about our foundation is, we're, we're not, we don't have a set day. You know, you, you don't have to go to the clinic. You don't have to go on this set day and this set time. You get your voucher and you come during our open hours. You're mixed in with everybody. It's not, you know, there's no parameters to when you can come or have to come. So that does make, make it a like lot easier. Else. You call, yeah. make an appointment, and all you do is bring it with you, and it's just the same as if you had insurance or any other form of payment. Exactly, and we even have late hours on some days too, so it makes it easy. Dr. Lesina, what are some of your goals that you have for the Vision Foundation in the future? Um, you know, our goals are to just to be able to meet all the needs. You know, it, it's it's the saddest thing to think that somebody's going through school with the without the ability to see clearly, and you know, their future is dependent so much on that early education that you know the foundation of a house is the house is only as good as its foundation, and it kind of goes back to that. Um, you, the program is still new. You know, we've only been doing this for a couple of years, so I think as it continues to grow, we're going to have to continue to grow with it to be able to meet all these needs. You know, Dr. Gillenwater's cataract surgery patient, for example, that would put a little bit, you know, more on the foundation. But those are the needs that we want to meet. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what they are. We want to be able to meet them all with time. Right, and we don't want to have that restriction on. Oh, we don't have enough money to pay for that. Let's we, do. And we it. hope to never have to say right. that to somebody. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And in that, obviously, there is a cost to the services that we provide through the Eye Center Vision Foundation. 
the doctors at the eye center, we all provide the exams for free, but there is a cost for the goods, the frames, the lenses, the follow-up cares, the surgeries if needed. So in order to pay for that, the Eye Center Vision Foundation has teamed up with the Hernando de Soto Historical Society to put on our annual fundraiser. Our annual fundraiser is called Beertopia. Beertopia is going to be held on Saturday, March 5th from 6 to 10 at the Gold Coast Eagle Distributing out in Lakewood Ranch. Dr. Mackey, can you tell us a little bit about Beertopia and what people would expect when they go out to it? I'd love to. First of all, Beertopia is, is a fun event. It is actually a very time you can kind of kick up your heels and have a good time with some family and friends. What we do is we, in essence, there are so many craft beers out there now. And they're very, every, you can't pick up the paper without a new craft brewery opening. It's a very much all the rave out there now. So what we thought is let's put something together where you can taste so many of these different brands of beer. InBev Budweiser has got dozens of lines to taste. Also, there are many local craft beers that are going to be there. So you can get a taste of different beers and see what you like. On th that being said, we have restaurants, and the restaurants provide food. We've got some wonderful restaurants, and they come, they donate their time, they donate their food, and they show up and they serve food. So in essence, you can have food, and you taste it and pair it with different beers. To mention a few restaurants, um, Soma Creekside, downtown Bradenton, I think they've been supporting us since the beginning. Emory Island Oyster Bar. Um, of course, they've got locations everywhere, and everybody knows them. They do a lot for the community, and they're supporting us. Um, Cafe Bocce in Sarasota is stepping in and helping us. There's a Cedar Reef Fish Camp that's helping us. There's also Chicken Kitchen, which is out in Lakewood Ranch, and they're stepping up and helping us. I think it's their, it's their second year. And Mexicali has been there all year. And there's well. a few Bradenton restaurants, Great Mexicali, pizza. Fratello's, and Demetrio's of Bradenton. Of course. They've been doing it since day one, too. Yeah. They, they've been wonderful. But, you know, so many of these places, they donate their food and their time. And again, it goes back, there's no cost to us for this event. They do it. And by pairing their food, and it's kind of a kind of a friendly competition when people are talking about the, the food and how great it was. So they really come with some of their best stuff. And it's really good. Now, there's no judging of the foods and things like that like they do. It's just a wonderful time that you can taste a lot of these beers in smaller portions. Now, those of you who just want to drink good old-fashioned Bud Light and Budweiser, the beer truck is there, and you can indulge in, of course, your normal beer. Also, I must say, too, there's a lot of people that don't drink beer. And that's fine. The event's a lot of fun, but PRP Wines is also going to be there, and they're going to have several different wines that you can kind of pair that and taste it with some different food. So even for you wine lovers out there, there's a little bit of something for everybody. Great. And I, on another note, with the Beertopia, the beers, one of the big beers that we're really going to kind of be um, highlighting this year is Stella Atois. And we're going to have a cool little thing going on pairing Stella Etoile with different foods, specifically cheeses and maybe some meats. And it's really cool, I've, I've done this before, to see how pairing a beer with a cheese, how it brings out the flavor of the cheese or how the cheese brings out a different flavor of the beer. So we're going to do some fun different activities too with the beer other than just drinking. And again, as, like Dr. Mackey said, if you're not a beer or a wine drinker, it's a foodie's delight. <laughs> there are so many different foods out there to try, it's a foodie's delight. Um, of course, there's going to be some entertainment out there, and I'm sure you've got some great raffle prizes or silent auction. Can you tell us a little bit about those, Dr. Laudacina? Absolutely. Um, we got some, some big ticket auctions. We got a, a full week in North Carolina in a cabin. Mm -hmm. We've got a weekend on Little Gasparilla Island. Um, we have a beautiful Mar-a-Lago necklace that's up for auction. We have a bucket of cheer, uh, which is a bucket of different spirits um, that will be you know, one of the auction items. And lastly, we have a day on the Gulf Coast Eagle um, Budweiser boat, which is an absolute blast, as I've been told. Yeah, nothing beats the Sunset Cruise with beer and food. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, and then we've had some great community, some community supporters, Dr. Gillen Waters. Who are some of the, the big supporters that we've got this year? Yes, um, our main sponsors this year are, of course, Gold Coast Eagle and their featured beer, Stella Artois. Uh, Bright House is another, and Conley Subaru. So those are our three main sponsors Very this good. year. And, of course, METD has helped us out quite a bit this year, too. We, we always appreciate them. Now, just as a reminder, of course, uh, it's a 21 and over event, so don't try to come unless you're 21. And it is an outdoor covered event, so dress appropriately. Ordinarily in March, the weather's good, but it's very volatile in March, so make, make arrangements to wear a coat if it's a little bit cold. But it will be covered, so it's not too bad.
Um, this, the Beer Tapia sounds like a lot of fun. The Vision Foundation has been um, wonderful for all four of us. We've really enjoyed doing it. Um, let's hear some final thoughts. Dr. Ladasina, can you give us any knowledge about what you're thinking? Um, you know, I'm just, I'm from Bradenton. You know, this is my hometown and, and I came back to help my community and it's just the most rewarding thing ever to me to be able to, to give these services to those I think that really need it the most. Um, it, it makes my life more fulfilled and I enjoy it very much. Uh, I agree, I agree. Dr. Gillen Waters? Um, yes, I'm also honored to be a part of the Vision Foundation. I love what we're doing in the community and all the support we've been receiving. Uh, one final thing on Beertopia, if anyone is interested in tickets, you know, they can get them at any of our three offices in Bradenton, um, in two offices in Bradenton and one out in Parrish, or they can visit www.desotohq.com and purchase tickets directly online. Great. Lastly, I just want to say thank you. It's been wonderful. I want to say you know, thank you to the nurses for the scrapbook, getting this starting, and really lighting a fire under me to do this service. I also want to thank all the people that are doing this. Again, the restaurants and the people for the stay in North Carolina and Gasparilla. These people are donating these things to us. The, the, the foundation sells itself. We're doing a wonderful thing, and we would hope that everyone would be on board for it. Beertopia is a great, fun event, and I would hope that y'all would support that too. Great. Yep, we're looking forward to it. Now, for any parent that has concerns about their child's vision, call the school nurse. School nurses are trained to do vision screenings and have the resources to assist with follow-up care if needed. Thank you so much for being with us here today, and a special thanks for METV for making this program possible. Our children are working so hard at school. Let's not let poor eyesight be something that holds them back. Thank you.